This is K.M. Wyland, and you are listening to the 432nd episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. Shockingly, and kind of horribly, I've found myself having a really hard time this year just sitting and reading. My attention span has been all over the place, and even though I have a bazillion books I want to read, it just hasn't been happening. So I've turned to something I never thought I'd turn to, audiobooks. I have a six-month subscription to Scribd, which is kind of like Netflix for books. So it was easy to switch from the ebook version of the book I was reading to the audiobook version. I've never been a big fan of audiobooks, never really liked being read to at all. But I'm really enjoying the change-up this time. I've been having fun with coloring books, which really keeps me grounded while I'm listening. Don't know how long this will last before I switch back to reading, but for now it's been a really great change that lets me keep reading even when my brain isn't cooperating. And now I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast, Five Steps to Writing Great Character Chemistry. What is character chemistry, and how can you use it to make your story unputdownable? We most often hear about character chemistry in reference to actors, particularly those playing love interests to each other. Chemistry is hard to define, but easy to spot. When two people show up on stage together and the result is a special spark, you know you're seeing chemistry. Chemistry is the it factor in all great fiction. Scratch that, it's the it factor in life. Consider some of the people you know. Even assuming you like them all equally, I'll bet you don't respond to them all in the same way when they walk into a party. Some of them get a smile and a casual wave from you. Others, however, light up the room. They amp up your energy, instantly make you happy, and make it easy for you to be your best self. To one degree or another, chemistry exists in all relationships, whether they're romantic, familial, friendly, or even just casual. Some chemistry is positive, some negative, Either way, chemistry is basically just an energetic exchange between people. Instinctively, humans respond to one another according to any number of social and subliminal signals that end up creating paradigms that belong uniquely to any two of us. It's a subtle dance in which we take cues from one another, testing out our moves, discovering to what degree we can unleash the full power of our personalities in an ever-shifting dynamic of opposition and harmony. When we have great chemistry with someone, we discover an almost instinctive synchronization that allows us to rest into our peak energy while easily batting back and forth the ball of interaction. Hello, friendly banter. But chemistry doesn't necessarily have to be friendly. We can potentially do this dance with our worst enemy just as surely as with the epic love of our lives. And that's where character chemistry becomes so valuable to fiction. In fiction, as in life, the chemistry between people lifts basic exchanges of dialogue or action beyond the status of basic information and into entertainment. Think about some of your favorite scenes. What makes them great? They're not doing anything more than presenting characters who are either showing or telling you something. And yet these scenes are branded into your brain. You love them. They've engaged you permanently, either because they've intellectually stimulated you, emotionally engaged you, or a combination of the two entertained you. I'm willing to bet my typewriter that character chemistry played a huge role in creating this dynamic for you. And yep, this is true even if the scene only featured one character, because guess what? The character still has chemistry with you. Long ago and far away, I ran a poll asking readers what they'd like me to write about. That was years ago, and I've long since written about almost all of the viable ideas from that poll. The one I neither wrote about nor threw away was a request for a post about, you guessed it, character chemistry. I've been kicking that idea around for a long time, trying to get a handle on what it is that creates character chemistry. It's such a nebulous thing, right? Even after I spent those nine paragraphs up there explaining what chemistry is, do we actually have any solid info on how to create it? Nope. It's kind of like theme in that we all know it when we see it, but we don't instinctively understand how to break down something so abstract into a practicable approach 
that can be applied consistently to our own characters. Character chemistry shares another similarity with theme. It's far too important to leave to the whims of our subconscious. Character chemistry can make all the difference in creating a superior story. I have read far too many books that were excellent in all respects, except their characters just flopped around on the page like dying fish. They were bland, they were boring, they had zero chemistry. This is perhaps most obvious in by-the-numbers romance stories that throw flabby Marty Stew and Mary Sue characters together and expect readers to care just because there's going to be a kiss in the end. Contrast that with books that offer great character chemistry. You know what I'm talking about, the ones where you just can't wait for two particular characters, whether they're romantic or not, to get together on stage because you know the results are going to be electric. For a very basic example, consider Barney and Otis in the classic sitcom The Andy Griffith Show. These archetypal frenemies lit up the screen with their bickering every time they were together. Or how about Joe and Lori from Little Women? There's a reason everybody ships them, and it has nothing to do with romance and everything to do with chemistry. Or how about Kathy and Heathcliff's love-hate relationship? Or Jack Aubrey and Stephen Matterin's odd couple pairing? Or Friends on the Run, Thelma and Louise? All of these characters are great in their own right, but they're better together, yeah? So today, let's consider five ways you can double your money by bringing your already dynamic solo characters together in powerful ways. Step number one, bring together two lively characters. Great character chemistry begins with great characters. Those flabby Marty Stew and Mary Sue characters I mentioned previously aren't ever going to light up a scene no matter how many chemistry clever tricks you pull. The foundation of good fictional relationships is good characters. This goes without saying. Still, Creating these fabulous characters remains one of the greatest challenges in all fiction. So it never hurts to double check yourself. Have you created characters with strong motivations and goals? Dichotomous complexities, such as an assassin with a conscience. And an active rather than a passive role in the story. That is someone who bears at least some responsibility for the difficulties in her life, rather than being a total victim. Step number two, create the dance of opposition and harmony. Remember that dance I talked about earlier? Character chemistry is never static. It is an ever-shifting dynamic of opposition and harmony. The perfect example of this is banter. Whether in real life or in fiction, banter is a generally playful exchange that takes on the appearance of an argument in which the engaged parties try to verbally one-up each other. This can have various undertones, from being totally lighthearted with no consequences, to verging on a real dispute with grave stakes. Great fiction is often noted for its witty banter, and great banter is always a sign of character chemistry. So, back to the dance metaphor. Think about professional dancers out on the floor. They are always in sync, but they are always moving. One pushes, another yields, and the roles are reversed back and forth, back and forth. They're not fighting. Their energies are harmonized, in this instance, toward the mutual goal of a seamless performance, perfectly balanced against one another. Even in instances where two characters are fighting, whether subtextually, verbally, or physically, the balance remains. They are evenly matched. Each gives as good as they get. And there is inevitably a certain measure of respect, one for the other's skill. Consider Jane Eyre and Edward Rochester. They spar almost from the moment they meet. Their arguments are earnest, but their energy is always aligned. There's a reason these two still top the list of fictional lovers, and that reason is character chemistry. Step number three, focus on dynamic character archetypes. Again, this dance of character chemistry is founded on the adjoining ideas of resistance and acquiescence. Some of this can result from a careful use of character archetypes. As in life, some of the best exchanges and relationships arise when one character pushes against his assumptions about the other character, only to eventually be met with resistance as those assumptions are subverted. For example, the best banter 
always includes moments of surprise. The banter rolls on pretty much as expected, an instinctive script of classic responses, until suddenly one of the characters no longer fits the expected role. She says something unexpected and the entire dynamic shifts. The other character is forced to adapt a new response. Nowhere do we find better banter, or generally better character chemistry, than in the heyday of golden Hollywood. For example, from one of the great romantic pairings of all time, William Powell and Myrna Loy, in The Thin Man. She says, all right, go ahead, go on, see if I care, but I think it's a dirty trick to bring me all the way to New York just to make a widow of me. He says, you won't be a widow for long. She says, you bet I wouldn't. He says, not with all your money. Step number four, enact change. The energy present in strong character chemistry means there must be movement. There must be progress, evolution, change. Bringing together these two dynamic personalities on the page is like smashing clouds together in a thunderstorm. There's gonna be lightning. Mutually strong characters who share story time for any length will necessarily change each other. Again, it is a search for balance. They spark against each other because of their differences, but if they're to remain in the same space, they must each adapt. Either one completely overwhelms the other, as is usually the case with protagonist-antagonist relationships, or they start rubbing off a few of each other's rough spots. Now, to some degree, the amount of change present will depend on the type of relationship you're creating. Relationships like Barney and Otis's in The Andy Griffith Show and Jack and Stevens in the Aubrey Matterin series are designed around static characters. If they changed, the show would lose the opportunity to reuse their shtick time after time. But in standalone stories, such as Little Women, Wuthering Heights, and Jane Eyre, the characters must change if they're to reach their individual goals. It's telling, in fact, that Kathy and Heathcliff, the one pairing in this group of examples that do not change, are the only ones who do not ultimately reach harmony in their relationship and success in their external goals. And step number five, create coherent conflict. In my opinion, here is the entire secret of character chemistry. It must be thematic. What we call chemistry is what happens when we have two characters on the page whose interaction is interesting because it is pertinent to the theme, which each character illustrating different facets of both it and the conflict. It's coherent conflict, so to speak. It's completely possible to create characters who are witty and fun together, even if they're misplaced within the larger story form. However, for character chemistry to be a worthy piece of a larger whole, it must, of course, contribute to that larger whole. When character chemistry becomes the fuel in the engine of a well-designed story, it then becomes the driver for the back-and-forth piston of plot and theme. In designing characters who well work well together, always look to theme first. How will they represent different facets of the thematic argument? How will they contrast each other's pertinent strengths and weaknesses? How can these very differences become important catalysts within the story itself? In short, it's not enough to create characters who can argue in an entertaining way. You need to make sure these charged exchanges are moving the plot. Character chemistry is one of the secret it factors of great fiction. Learn to inject it in your own stories, and you can be sure you will create the kind of scenes that stick with readers long after they close your book. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, you can visit my website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. And be sure to check back again next week.